writing a lot of like really personal personal stuff I've spent a lot of time alone and, and kind of been somewhat isolated in the last year so um, I, I've definitely grown I think as a songwriter that way where I'm, I'm writing a bit deeper these days well I've been in the, in the business for a lot of years um, I started uh, in the middle 50s actually touring with uh, a group called Hal Lone Pine, Betty Cody. They were from Bangor, Maine. They were used to host the WWVA Wheeling, West Virginia Jamboree at the time. They were stars. They had, you know, on RCA Victor. Their son was uh, Lenny Bro. And uh, they came up to Winnipeg here, and I, I was fortunate enough. They uh, came after me and asked me if I would join the show as a rock and roll singer. And Lenny and I uh, became the best of friends, of course. We toured and even cut a record. Uh, 45 back then in 1958-59 as a song I wrote called She's a Square. That was a rockabilly song. We didn't know it was rockabilly at the time, but that's what it ended up being called. And Lenny and I, uh, Lenny played all the guitar on it and the whole thing. It's still out today, as a matter of fact. Uh, the original recording is being, uh, it's on a, co a lot of compilations, rockabilly compilations. And if I ever track down the guy who does that, <laughs> I would like to get paid. <laughs> I am my mama's side and daddy's too. I am the best of both. And you'll always hear me boast that I'm mighty proud of me too. that would rise cause we were in between I have my daddy's looks and my sister lovely Cree and we're mighty proud we're Métis I uh, joined Doc Walker months after I graduated from high school and we've been you know we've released eight albums in the last ten years so but you know I always had these songs that were personal about my childhood and things where I was grow growing up in, in Portage La Prairie and stuff like that so I just needed a home for them. You know I just played a show in, in Portage La Prairie actually a, a couple weeks ago and uh, it was very strange because when you do the meet and greet it's normally my wrangler comes and grabs the three of us and you know we walk into the room together and we at least got we got each other's backs at least. Then <laughs> In this sense he just grabbed me and I just felt like oh where's my mom. <laughs> definitely a part of me I mean ever since I was you know six years old I've been singing and um, I never thought that I would be doing it as a career because growing up you know we were always told we're going to university and all that kind of thing so it was just something I always loved to do on the side and then when I was 20 I was able to pursue it as a career and start touring and and so it's, it's always been really close to my heart and I just feel very fortunate that I'm able to actually pursue it as a career and and keep doing it after all these years and um, so yeah it's a piece of me without music I I'd be lost I'm a creative person so I I need it to to be fulfilled I can't hide my feelings inside every day I fall for you and you have no clue no clue it's my 
favorite thing in the world. I um, feel more comfortable on the stage than I do in the crowd. And that's just the way it is for me. It's, it's part of me. If I go a while without doing it, I feel like a starvation for it. Um, it's something I have to do. I just find no greater joy than being on stage performing. Baby, why can't it last? I don't want to keep pushing out the pain with a pedal at my feet. Oh, baby, you're a race of gas. Ah, I did my hair out of that black dress you like. I want it just to turn you on. As a matter of fact, it was not too long ago I got a question from a writer asking about uh, Canadian country music. And I said, well, that's kind of hard to define because, I mean, uh, Stomp and Tom Connors, I guess, would probably be defined as Canadian country. Uh, any Canadian who writes country music, I guess that's Canadian country. And they said, but what is the Canadian sound? And I said, ah, depends where you're from, I guess, you know. I said, everyone has their own, their own kind of sound. Uh, Doc Walker, they have their own sound. You know, the Good Brothers have their own sound. So I said, but you know, to be, to be honest, well, the way I think anyway, is that uh, country music started out of Nashville. And a lot of the, the Canadian country singers, uh, when they're writing, they usually go down to Nashville to co-write with other writers down there. They could be other Canadian writers, but they just get in that scene. And uh, so it's, it's hard for me to define Canadian country music because a lot of the, the uh, uh, Canadian country stars um, live there and right there. Cause it'll be a long, long road and you carry a heavy load but you're the best of both your matey Deep inside I know that I'm special I am my mama's side and daddy's too I write differently each time. Uh, with Doc Walker sometimes, you know, Murray will come in with a great idea and we'll just go that way. Or, or I'll come in with an idea. But I usually do leave the very personal stuff, kind of put it in a stash and, and then when I do have time, uh, which I never have time, but <laughs> when I do find the odd moment, I'll, I'll bring those ideas out and, and really uh, try to refine them. We wrote one of our biggest hits, Beautiful Life. It, it took us about 45 minutes. and. You know, there's songs that we haven't released and uh, some of our best songs on, on our records and they would take months and months of just toiling over it, just knowing that there's something really good about it and just wanting it to be perfect by the time it goes on the album. So baby, will you say it with me? Um, I think I've just been lucky that I I've always loved to write, so it's something that I've always done ever since I was young. Um, I do a lot of co-writing. I'm in a band, Keith and Renee, and so I do a lot of writing with my partner, Keith. And um, any on this new album that I'm going to be putting out, it's my first solo album, uh, I've done some co-writing with, with new people, and so it's, it's a challenge for me to get out there and kind of, because it's such a personal thing. Like, my comfort zone is to write by myself for sure. And, but it's nice to, to practice that, to write with other people. And um, again, it's just, um, it's a part of me. It's something that I need to do. If I, if I don't songwrite for a while, I feel like something's missing. I have to write it down. It's like therapeutic.
day I fall for you. I think that um, when you see someone live, you, you really get to see how, how real they are. And I think that audiences are smart and they know they can recognize the real thing when they see it and they can tell if they're being fooled. They're trying <laughs> trying to be taken for a fool. So I think it's um, it's something I worked on for a long time and I continue to work on because I want to be great when I step on stage and I don't think that the audience deserves anything less than everything I have. Baby, you're a waste of gas And I won't live this way I've got a phone to take And now we go hard to write with other people. Uh, I guess it's because a lot of times the songs are written after you finish a gig and you're coming home, you're either on a, you know, on a tour bus, or I'm not on a tour bus, but you come home and, and uh, go in the basement and start writing, you have this idea. I came home one night with, a, with an idea about, uh, uh, you know, I sing a lot of Métis, I write a lot of Métis songs about the Métis. Somebody asked me once, there were other mixes, you know. So I went home that night and I, that was bugging me. I couldn't go to sleep, so I wrote a song called Conchita Kowalski, How Did You Get That Name? <laughs> yeah, I am the best of both, and you'll always hear me boast. Oh, I'm not proud, I'm me Being with Doc Walker, they, we have this set list that we've just added songs to every album we, we come out with. And, Mine, I just had my one album and, and a couple cover songs I knew, and maybe a Doc Walker song here and there. And uh, it was just looking down at the page thinking, I don't even know what key that song is in. <laughs> it's definitely not autopilot. You can't put it in autopilot. It's your brain is, is on overload. Well, I've been find co-writing it's like I don't want to say you have to compromise but you know you come in with an idea you think you have an idea in your head and then you have to be open that it's going to change and it's going to go into a new direction and so if you're not open to that it might not work out you know in the beginning I used to be that way and, and you don't gel that way and you know so you have to just let it go and just allow it to happen as it's supposed to happen and I think that's just a challenge in itself but the outcome can be really awesome so so yeah, if, I think I go in into a co-write like expecting that. It's like, okay, this is a co-write. It's not just about me, but um, yeah, so I give my piece and they're gonna give their piece too. And you have no clue. No, you have no clue. No clue. found that was really hard in Winnipeg because people have day jobs and they have you know stuff going on and down there that's what they do so um, I remember my first trip down there I was absolutely terrified and <laughs> terrified to co-write with them I thought they were gonna say you suck get out of here um, but um, the more you co-write the more confident you become in what you have to offer and the more comfortable you become with uh, compromise and um, you know, sharing your ideas and forming new ideas and walking into a room with a stranger and basically pouring out your soul to them within five minutes. So, um, Nashville has made me a better songwriter. Absolutely. I have to bring my A game every day. I can turn around now. 